Ventilator station state is simple. Here we are talking about PCO2. If your patient is ventilating nicely, his PCO2 will be between 35 to 45. If the patient is not uh, ventilating properly, if it is there is uh, retaining CO2, ventilation is hyperventilation, the PCO2 will rise. And if the patient is hyperventilating, then you have PCO2 um, more, uh, sorry, less than 35. So this is nothing specific in this. But what you need to understand is, is this the formula always? No. Anything which pulls, uh, pushes the diaphragm upwards towards the lungs, like uh, massive ascites, or uh, which is chronic, pregnancy, obese patient, their lungs, uh, <coughs> they, these people they a little hyperventilate. So their PCO2 level is, is normal PCO2 level is somewhere around 30. Uh, doctor, can I interrupt for a minute? Uh, there are a few people who cannot see your screen. I just want to ask those doctors, uh, is it visible now for you? Okay, done. Fine, doctor. Please continue. Thank uh, you. So, <clears throat> if a pregnant lady uh, comes with PC, uh, uh, PCO2 of 30, then it's fine because of the push diaphragm. But if the same pregnant lady comes with a PCO2 of 40, 42, that means there is a problem. This is, she is hyperventilating. So then that you need to take care. Also, ventilation is important. Suppose a patient who was um, having pneumonia or any other lung pathology and patient was on oxygen and now PCO2 has started rising slightly. It was 35, now it is 40, now it come to 50. That means your patient is hypoventilation has started and the patient is getting fatigue and you need to intervene there. So ventilation status, you need to take in context of the clinical scenario. I've got 30 minutes now, madam. Doctor, 30 to 40 minutes. 30, okay. So this is one thing which everybody when jumps onto the arterial blood gas, they skip PO2, they skip the PCO2, they just see the pH, which is a wrong practice. Always you should go in stepwise manner, just like the way you do in ECG. So acid-based status. So before uh, jumping on to explaining this um, uh, PCO2, uh, pH uh, acid-base disorder, just understand the lungs and kidney are working in very much coordination to <clears throat> make the acid pH in the normal range. The only difference is kidney takes a little bit time to uh, uh, adjust the petal, adjust according to pH. Lungs do a little faster. So they, the patient, you can have uh, hyperventilation, hyperventilation because lung is just fast, but kidneys take time at least 24, 48 hours to adjust to the pathology. So these two organisms are, uh, uh, organs are mainly responsible for that. So normal range of uh, pH is 7.3 to 7.45. So anything below 7.35 is acidemia. Anything above 7.45 is uh, alkalemia. Alkalosis in the blood or acidosis in the uh, what you call is uh, blood. But those who are experts or those who are uh, those who have um, learned ABG and now practicing more, so for them specifically, we uh, take the center point is 7.4. So it can happen that the compensatory mechanisms are so fair enough so that your pH is in the normal range, but the biotop and PCO2 are not in the normal range. So that means. There is some primary disorder and compensated by some other disorder. So for them, take 7.4 as the neutral level. Anything below 7.4 is acidosis and anything above 7.4 is alkalosis. But majority of you can think not right now, those who are new, 7.35 to 7.45. So anything below 7.35 acidosis, anything for, uh, about, about more than 7.45 is alkalosis. So, as I told you, there are two components, metabolic component and respiratory component. So, if there, when there is a metabolic component and bicarbs are the base and PCO2 is an acid. So, if there is an acidosis, your bicarb should go down. If there is an alkalosis, your bicarb should go up. Oppositely, if, if, because PCO2 is an acid, if there is an acidosis, your PCO2 should go up. And if it is alkalosis, your PCO2 should come down. So that way, if the primary culprit is bicarbicol, is metabolic acidosis, uh, same way metabolic alkalosis or respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. 
based on this we can define we have different disorders high anion gap metabolic acidosis normal anion gap metabolic acidosis low anion gap or negative anion gap metabolic acidosis if we call it metabolic alkalosis it can be fluid responsive or fluid responses some say it chloride responsive or chloride unresponsive now one thing you you are seeing here in respiratory component there is acute and chronic acute and chronic whether it's alkalosis or acidosis in metabolic as uh, component there is no such thing as acute or chronic why because kidney always takes time so the component Uh, kidney uh, takes time so it is always a slow uh, uh, composition but in respiratory component we need to see the lung has adjusted recently or it has been for so long the patient is hyperventilating right now it has been hyperventilating for so long so respiratory component is are divided into acute and chronic acidosis same way for alkalosis acute and chronic so we'll see all these in little bit detail so cause of metabolic acidosis anion gap high anion gap normal anion gap low anion gap so before jumping on to all the causes just understand that practically there is no anion gap in your body all the positive ions and all the negative ions are in the equal range so there is absolutely no the uh, charge your of your body is neutralized as zero we are not positively charged or we are not negatively charged but what is happening there is a limitation of the machines which we measure the anions so certain amount of anions we can measure and certain amounts of anion we cannot measure so the difference between these two which we can measure and which we cannot measure means the, there is a difference between the positive anions which we measure and the difference between negative anions which we measure so that unmeasured component is what we call as anion gap so if that anion gap is increasing that means we have put an extra acid or uh, something into the body which is causing the anion gap to rise if it is normal anion gap and means we are losing one component and the other component is adjusting so it will be normal anion gap negative anion gap means something is added but the component is different it's a positive one which is being added so what are the major causes of anion and gap ketoacidosis ketoacidosis could be a diabetic ketoacidosis alcoholic ketoacidosis or starvation ketoacidosis most common lactic acidosis very much common lactic acidosis first causes hypoperfusion in shock second thing is liver failure patients uh, where you find liver is not um, detoxifying the lactates so uh, the uh, lactate will rise then you have renal failure where the acid cannot be secreted poisons and drugs which cause increase in the uh, different types of acidosis nagma normal anion gap either it's a gi cause or it's a renal cause either it's a gi cause or renal cause so if it is a gi cause patient is losing bicarbs either in the diarrhea or there is a fistula drains dulling or there is a some tubing dulling uh, tubings are there in the abdomen uh, by which you are losing bicarb or renal tubular acidosis in which the kidneys are not able to filter or absorb the bicarbs and they are losing bicarb in the urine so in normal anion gap in that and low anion gap are rare uh, low anion gap though not very common but they are common multiple myeloma which can present with negative anion psychiatric patients who are on lithium and uh, bromide sort of things they um, they have uh, bromides and uh, lithium in their drugs it, this these at times can cause toxicity obviously hypercalcemia hyperkalemia hypercalcemia at times can call uh, can cause Uh, negative or low anion gap, which you can pick from EBG per se. So these are the causes of uh, metabolic acidosis. We'll approach how to calculate the anion gap. So, so anion gap which is there in the EBG report, it is not in the body. Actual anion gap. Now to calculate the anion gap, one thing one thing you need to remember: most of the persons just see the anion gap what is there in the blood gap report which is called as actual anion gap the same way in, we, in which we did it for oxygen we saw the oxygen report in the uh, abg it was po2 and then we compared what was expected same we have to do for anion gap what is the actual anion gap which is are in the abg report and what is the expected in this particular patient so let's see how to calculate that expected and the difference between two will decide whether it's a high anion gap metabolic acidosis normal or negative so 
actual anion gap means what is there in the EVG report. Expected anion gap, so your normal anion gap expected is 12. But if your patient has a, a low albumin level or there is a pH in the blood which is changed, it can cause uh, difference in the anion gap. So for albumin levers, expected anion gap is normal anion gap, which is there in a blood, plus pH correction, plus albumin correction. So for pH correction, if pH is less than 7.35, subtract 2, straightforward. If pH is more than 7.45, plus 4. So suppose if you have an acidosis, uh, if you have pH of 7.2, and your normal anion gap is 12. So for acidosis, you correct a minus 2. So minus 2, 10. So expected anion gap is 10. For alkalosis, suppose you have a patient who is hypoventilating. The normal anion gap is 12 plus 4, 16. With now, with 16 and 10, you will compare, not with 12. Albumin correction formula is very uh, simple. If your albumin drops by 1, your anion gap drops by 2. Suppose your patient protein is albumin is 2. Normal is 4. So it has dropped by 2. So an anion gap will uh, drop by 4. So if your normal anion gap is uh, 12, minus 4, it will be 8. Now with 8, you will compare. What is my blood gas report? If your uh, blood gas report is suppose uh, 15 or 14, earlier you would have told it is a normal anion gap because the normal anion gap is 12 plus minus 2. But now because it, uh, because it is 8, you will say it is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis because my corrected uh, expected uh, anion gap was 8, but my actual anion gap in the ABG report is uh, 13. Obviously, I know that all these discussions need one-to-one uh, -one or elaborative uh, uh, discussions, but what I'm trying is I'm trying to give you an idea what is there written in the books and how you should approach. So whenever you, uh, you see an anion gap, always try to calculate what is the expected and we'll compare with that. So the difference between two will decide this. Actual anion gap, which is there in the EBG report, expected anion gap, which is there in the, um, uh, which is we are expecting normal anion gap plus pH correction plus aluminum correction. And the delta anion gap is the difference between which will decide what is there. So this is the thing. If the actual anion gap is very much higher than expected, it's HAGMA. If the actual anion gap is equal or somewhere low, oh, then it is called NAGMA, plus minus two range. If the actual anion gap is very, very low, less than 50% of the expected, it is called low anion gap uh, uh, mm, metabolic acidosis. And if the anion gap is negative, it will be obviously negative anion gap metabolic acidosis. So to give an example of this, let's see your anion gap uh, in a blood gas EBG is 14. So by routine formula, uh, you will say we will compare with 12 plus minus two, you will say this is a normal anion gap, but your expected anion gap comes out to be nine. Now it is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis because you know, it was 14, nine plus minus two comes to be 11 at the max. So that's the beef idea. Okay, now same way, if your anion gap is 18, suppose, so you will say it's a high anion gap metabolic acidosis because normally we compare with 12, but when you calculate it, the expected and expected comes out to be 16. So you will say, no, this is a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis because 16 plus minus 2 is 18 and ours is 18. Why this is important to know whether it's a high anion gap, normal anion gap, reason being is your etiology changes. And in a single patient, you can have both the mixed disorders also, but we need, we are trying to find the cause of uh, uh, the events which are, which is going on in the patient. So that's why this is the, uh, this is important. 